Welcome to Micron's Hardware. In this video I would like to tell you about this 3D printed computer chassis. This one is called the Modcase Evolution or simply Modcase Evo. The chassis is available in three sizes – MATX, MITX and APU. As you could have guessed it, the MATX supports motherboards of micro ATX form factor, then ITX supports ITX motherboards, and APU is the tiny one, it supports ITX motherboards without external graphics card. For me personally, the micro ATX version is the most interesting one because the micro ATX motherboards and ATX power supplies are usually significantly cheaper than ITX motherboards and SFF power supplies. So I have printed myself this one in white color, but of course any other colors are available as well. And let's take a deep look inside this chassis, how it is made, how it works and what you can do with it. Okay, the first thing I need to mention is that this chassis consists of four different corners. So this corner, this corner, this corner and this corner are printed separately. And that's made because the standard printers such as my Prusa MK4 are not big enough to print entire half. If you're printing mini ITX version, then it will be only two parts, this part and this part, and each are printed separately. Now, once we have four corners, we need to connect them with these kind of connectors using M3 screws. And you can see it is quite a few of them, three on this side, one here, and then we have a couple there, a couple there. And even though the whole construction is pretty sturdy and well made and very well thought through, it is still very annoying to get these screws connected because you simply do not have enough space to get enough torque and to do it quickly. I found myself such flexible adapter so I can use my screwdriver, just connect to the screw and rotate it for as long as I need. But of course it is also possible to use these kind of angle shaped wrenches to screw the screws, but it is not as fast as with a screwdriver. Now let's take a look at the front panel. As you can see, we have here this kind of a click-in mechanism. So we have holes in the chassis frame, and then we have these kind of um, clips installed into the chassis. These clips turn out to be pretty flexible and I'm not worried to get them broken, but even if they do break, it is very easy to just print a couple more and that's it. How it works is that here I have one half of the side panel and then I have another half and all I have to do, just install it here, click it in and it just stays there. That's it. And it stays there pretty firm. I don't have to worry that it will fall out or something else bad may happen. At the same time, if I apply some force, I can just take it out with no problem and no damage to either of these clips. So the design is pretty good and pretty smart. In this chassis you install your motherboard on these plastic standoffs and it is possible to screw your screw straight into the plastic and secure your motherboard that way. But if you have a very heavy CPU cooler or for some reason you want a better option, for example if you will be shipping the chassis, then it is possible to use M3 screws with the nuts. And here on the back side you can see you can add nuts and secure your motherboard very tight and very firmly inside the chassis. Additionally, for easier CPU cooler installation, it is possible to open this back door like this. We have exactly the same mechanism with these uh, click-in clips over here. And you gain access to the back side of the motherboard where the CPU cooler is installed. So it's very easy and very quick to install and replace CPU coolers and then just put this thing back and just click it in, the same as the front panel. I really like this option. Now let's take a look at the back side. Here we have a place for 120 mm fan. This is obviously the motherboard I.O. And then we have here all the expansion slots of a micro ATX motherboard. Once a graphics card or any other expansion card is installed, it can be secured with this kind of clip. So it goes like this. And uh, right now it is not very tight, it can move a little bit uh, to the sides and that's because we don't have anything installed here. So the gap over here is not filled with a graphics card bracket and there is not enough friction to keep it in place. But the idea is that it's supposed to be pretty tight and supposed to secure your expansion cards in place. 
Then these two pieces are for those who want to route the water cooling tubes through the chassis for whatever reason. I'm not gonna do that, but if you want to, it is here. And this one is for a reset button if you would want that. The button is exactly the same as on the front panel. And on the front panel, you can see here, I have a white button, but the button, of course, is not printed on the 3D printer. So you need to buy a button. You can buy a standard 16 millimeter button, which are available on Amazon AliExpress, or you can do like I did. I bought myself a pack of these cheap click buttons, which are the same for reset and power. And then I have developed myself uh, this kind of enclosure for the button because I wanted to have the same color as the chassis and I don't want to have any LEDs at the front panel. So I printed this enclosure, installed button into there and then put the enclosure straight into the chassis and uh, it clicks just fine. So that's my solution. Now, for the front USB, we have two standard USB Type-A and one USB Type-C exit. In both cases, you would have to buy expansion cables or extension cables, whatever they are called. So, for example, something like this. In this case, this adapter has these two USB ports soldered on this PCB, so I'm not gonna desolder them. Uh, otherwise, I could have tried it, but I have bought something like this from AliExpress for testing, but it has not yet arrived. You would have to buy something like this as well. This, of course, goes to the motherboard, and these two are plugged into these holes and then secured with a bolt or with a screw uh, in the chassis. The same works for the USB Type-C, but of course you need to buy a USB Type-C expansion cable and ensure that your motherboard supports it. Additionally, it is possible to print dust filters for these side panels, so it is less dust inside the chassis, but I'm not gonna do that because my home is not that dirty. And it is also possible to print mounting brackets for SATA, HDD and SSD drives. I'm also not going to do that because I value space inside the chassis and my planned build is going to use only one M.2 SSD drive. For the next step, I plan to assemble a computer inside this chassis, test it, validate it, see if I like it or dislike it, and I will report about it in the next video. If you're interested in this chassis and you would like to either buy it or order printing of this chassis, then all the links will be available in the video description, and of course you can buy it from me or order printing services from me. With this, I have to say thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope it was interesting, bye for now.